Exum Cloud Components allow us to manage content centrally and reuse these components in multiple apps. If you manage your content already centrally from a content management system, you can use this content within your component. In this video, I'm creating a data source in Exum Cloud and assign it to my first component in the company project, the text teaser. We successfully completed Sprint Zero, where we set up the XM Cloud environment as well as the development project using the Foundation Head project as basis. We renamed the project to fit the customer needs and configured serialization. We are also able to connect the app with the XM Cloud environment and we can spin up an XM Cloud locally running on Docker. If you missed any of these steps, check for any of the previous videos in this tutorial series. The XM Cloud Component Builder offers a no to low code approach to build components and connecting data sources from XM Cloud, Content Hub 1, but also other sources to it. This is a very simple approach so that also marketers can build their own components. XM Cloud Components can be used to centrally manage the content of our components and use those components in different apps, for example, in your website managed with XM Cloud Pages, as seen here. However, I want to use the component as a UI building block in XM Cloud on different pages with different content. Therefore, I need to set up the data model for this component and create the content. As the content should be managed in XM Cloud, I navigate back to the Tools section and open Content Editor. I want to create a data template that represents my data model. Then I want to create a data source item in my site. When I drag and drop the new component onto one of my pages, I want to get asked to select a data source. As mentioned, I want to achieve that I can store data source items in my site that I can use when adding a particular component. Data sources in Axum Cloud can be either a dedicated data source under my site data data source folder and then the data source item. It can be created under my page and then the data folder and then the data source item or the page itself can be the data source item to be used when the component is placed on. In my case, I want to apply the first option, meaning having a data source with the data folder of my site. Usually what you would do when creating new items is to spin up your local Docker instance of XM Cloud to not interfere with other developers creating items. As I'm using the XM Cloud environment exclusively, I can directly work here. The first thing I want to do is creating a headless module. This helps me to create a consistent folder structure for all my component related items. Also, when managing a multi-site environment, I can deploy the required item structure for a particular feature in a very easy way. We will probably get more in details with headless modules at a later stage. For now, I navigate to System, Settings, Project. I do a right click to enter the context module and use the insert option to create a new folder. I name this folder after the name of the site collection, which is company dev. I want to create the headless module within that folder, but as you can see, the folder does not provide the insert option for headless modules. Those are always created from the root node, in this case, project. In here, I can provide a name for the module. I call it basic components. I select the folder where the module should be created, which is company dev. Now I need to select where I want the module to create folders. For the component, I just need it on templates and branch templates. However, I might need also renderings and placeholder settings later. So I get those created as well. I will not need settings, layouts and media library. I select that this module can be installed on site and not on site collection level, formerly known as headless tenant. The headless module has been created. When looking into the template section under project and company dev, I can see that the basic components folder has been created as well. In here, I can create the required templates. First, I create the data template with the name text teaser. I can choose where to create the template, but the current folder is already pre-selected. 
I also directly create a template for the text teaser folder. This will be the one to contain my text teaser items within the site data folder. Back to the text teaser template. We can define sections within the data template to structure the content. This makes especially sense when dealing with many fields that represent the template. So I name the section Content. Now I can create the required fields of the data model. The first field I name Headline. This can be of type Single Line Text. The second field I name Subheadline, which is also of type Single Line Text. And I create a field called content and I change the type to rich text. I could change the icon for both templates. I leave the text teaser as is and change the text teaser folder icon to an actual folder. Next, I want to make sure that marketers and authors are guided when creating content. Therefore, I want to configure the insert options. Within a text teaser folder, I want the authors to create text teaser items or more text teaser folders to structure it even further. I would do that on the so-called standard values. Now, the standard values usually contain default values that are set on the item creation but can be overwritten afterwards. Therefore, I click on the Builder Options tab and create standard values. Next, I click on the Configure tab and then the Assign button. In here, I can assign the insert options for the folder template. I navigate to the previously created templates and select the first text teaser with a double click and then the text teaser folder. I told you that I can use modules to install the feature related items to a site. However, that would require an additional step which I skip for now and just create the data source folder manually. So I navigate to my site data folder and perform a right click and select the insert options to create a text teaser folder. Now, my newly created text teaser folder is not listed here, but as I'm an administrator, I can choose to create items from all templates. So, I select the text teaser folder to be created under data. I name this item text teasers. When checking the insert options of the text teaser folder, you can see that we can create text teaser items and more text teaser folders. Let me create a text teaser item and add some dummy content to it. How to use components, easy and smart ways designing your pages, and I copy in the content from the previous design. As a last step, we need to make the data template available in XM Cloud Components to be used as a data source. This we can do on the settings item within the site. I can either search for FEAAS, meaning Frontend as a Service, or just scroll down to the field FEAAS Component Data Source Templates. Here I can specify all templates that should be used as data sources in the Component Builder. So let's select the text teaser by double clicking it and save. Now that we created a data model and a content item, I need to go back to the component builder to wire everything up. So let's first ensure that the new data source is available in the component builder. In the data source section, I can find the text teaser data source now listed at the bottom of the page. Great. Now I navigate to component builder. Currently, I use static data in XM Cloud Components. But I can choose to set the text from a static to a map value. First, I need to select the data source template from the list of available templates. I select the text teaser template. I can preview what fields are available. Now I click on Next to actually select the field from the template that should be mapped to the component field. I select Headline and complete the mapping process. I repeat the steps for my headline 3. I set the text to the mapped text teaser template and select the subheadline field. Last but not least, I need to map the rich text field. 
When I copied my content from the HTML design to the component, several elements were created automatically. All of the fields are paragraphs. So if I map my content field to the paragraph, I can see that it does not resolve the formatting coming from the XM Cloud Rich Text Editor. As a rich text field is returning HTML and paragraphs strip off many sorts of HTML formatting, I remove all paragraphs and I add an HTML block element. This one I map to the content field from my template. And complete. Let's restage the component to make the change available in pages. In pages, I can see that the component I added before is blank, as it requires now a data source that has not been set. I remove the component and add it again. Now it is asking me for a data source. Let me select the data source I created before. So I navigate to my site, data, text teasers, text teaser one. Yay! So the content appears in the component using my design. As we created items in XM Cloud, meaning templates, modules, folders, and so on, we should create another feature branch to collect all changes, serialize them into the repository and merge them into the main branch so we can ship the changes later to higher environments in a consistent way. Let's switch into Visual Studio Code and open the terminal. I ensure that I do not have changes and I'm on the main branch. Now I create a dedicated branch for all changes I'm doing for the text teaser feature. In order to pull the items from the XM Cloud environment, I need to connect first using the command .NET Sidecore Cloud Login. The browser opens and asks me to confirm that it is the correct device that wants to connect using the CLI. I confirm and select the organization I want to connect to. Next, I can pull the changes using .NET Sidecore Sil Pool, passing the environment ID from my user.json file, that is dev. If you want to know more about serialization, check out my previous video. To confirm if all items have been serialized, let's go and check all new files. In the placeholder settings, we got a new folder named after the site collection company dev and a folder named basic components in there. Same new structure in the project renderings. Within the site data folder, I find a new item called text teasers. The text teaser one data source is not there as we set up the serialization to not pull any content related items. In the templates folder, I find the most important ones, which are my templates for the text teaser and text teaser folder, including the standard values. However, one item seems to be missing, the module. This is because I have not configured to pull modules so far. This can be seen in the company.modules.json. So let's go to the company.modules.json.template and copy the paragraph for the modules into our document. I have to exchange the folder path from feature to project and save. I run the .NET Sidecore Sir pull command again and get an error. It says that the path does not exist. And that's correct. I forgot to exchange the placeholder for the site collection name by the actual site collection that is company dev. Let's change that and save. Now I run the command again and this time it is successful. Let me check if the files are there now. That looks good. Let's commit the changes or better let's add the changes first and then commit. And push or better push and set the upstream. Done. We can create the pull request and merge the changes to main. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.